Welcome to the show. I'm Pat Sherwood, joined by the lovely... I am Rory McKernan. Huh. Well, let's uh, get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Perhaps not. Why, no. why are you here? Why is Rory not here? We're here today uh, without Rory because his wife Angie just gave birth to a little girl. So we're taking, we're taking over for him. And Rory, this is for you, brother. I'm not happy <laughs> about it, but it's for you. Here's who we have on the show today. Great show in store for you. We have Mark Rosen and Sally State, two great CrossFit athletes and Masters Divisions going to the games this year. We have last name ever, first name greatest, Neil Maddox on the program. Training partners with Jason Kalipa, the 2008 Games champ. Don't go anywhere. Pat Sherwood here, joined with the two original CrossFit gangsters at the desk with me. Mark Rosen, Sally Stade, thanks for being with us. Uh, you two guys both qualified to go to the Masters competition, the 2011 Reebok CrossFit Games. So first of all, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys have been doing CrossFit for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you just turned 50, Mark. Sally, you're 64. That's correct. Seven years into CrossFit. That's and correct. 10th in the Open. 10th in the Open. And 19th in the Open. That's correct. So going, you're going back to the games. You were there in 2007. So how does it feel to be going back? Oh, it feels great to be going back, but it's a totally different experience compared to 2007. Um, 2007 was a really small event. Um, you could sign up and go, and uh, and this is you know with uh, some of the greatest athletes in the entire world. So um, it's exciting, but it's uh, intimidating too. Now, do you feel that having that? amazing masculine facial hair will give you more of <laughs> an advantage in uh, 2011? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is uh, going to carry me carry me through the... I wholeheartedly agree. We appreciate your support. I think yeah, you do really well. You're welcome. And so Sally, this will be your first yes, it will. time going mm -hmm. to the games after seven years of, of CrossFit. Uh -huh. And we've seen you in countless videos of, you know, modifying workouts, scaling workouts, getting, you know, strength PRs and things of that nature. So. How does it feel at 64 years old to be going to the CrossFit Games? I guess I'd have to answer that with, I, I feel really honored and excited. I'm excited to meet some of the women in the uh, Masters category that I'm in because they made some, some amazing performances in the Open. Oh, for sure. And uh, have you looked, have you followed some of those women in, you know, the recent years? The Games have been going, going on for, you know, since 2007. So this is your first year. Have you, have you looked at that and did you ever think one day you'd be throwing down in that arena? No, I, I didn't. I remember uh, saying many years ago, gee, if you're going to do the games, it would be great to have uh, categories for those of us who are older because at 64, it's unrealistic to compete with a 24-year-old. Sure. So I'm really excited. I have looked at a lot of the stats and the performance of some of the women, and especially in the over 60, and it's it's just it's great to see that there's people in this age group and some of the men as well with these amazing performances oh for sure and, and there's putting down year after year some of the most motivating and inspiring performances we see at the games you've got a slight wardrobe malfunction going on with the mustache <laughs> but that's that's okay so we roll with it but what I, talk to talk to me mark so 2007 now 2011 how has your training change or you know what are you doing as a 50 year old man out there to get ready for the games well i can say uh that i'm working a lot harder now and able to work harder now than i was in 2007 in 2007 i was just a couple years into crossfit um, and um, i couldn't do three days in a row uh very easily uh, three days in a row i was hurting for a while okay um, so i'm still seeing myself get stronger my recovery better um, even up to 50 and I, I'm hoping beyond. So. And you just, uh, we were talking this morning because there's a, a video of you on the main site doing an overhead squat, I think with 180 pounds on the main site, but you've bested that and well, you know, you're, you're getting stronger. What's your overhead squat to now? Um, I, well, I've done 215 is my overhead squat. And Sally and I were just talking about how we're, we're still each making PRs. Um, and it, it's funny when you first start CrossFit, you make a PR every workout, right? Right. I mean, CrossFit's great. You know, it's so Walk inspiring. Walk in the next day, it, something gets better. <laughs> right. 
now you know they they don't come quite so frequently, but we're still making PRs years into it, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's pretty pretty exciting. You can keep getting better and stronger even at our age. So that's a, a fascinating topic that I'm, I work a lot of level one seminars, and we get that question a lot from the crowd, which is. How long, you know, things are going great right now, but how long can I expect that to continue? You know, how many years of adaptation are we going to get? And you guys are some of the, on the front runners of that, experiencing that. And you've been in this for seven years now, 64 years old, and you're telling me you're still getting PRs. And what are those PRs looking like these days? What, well, what are you PRing in? I just, uh, on deadlift in May for my wedding anniversary, I did a 230-pound deadlift. Nice. It's a and nice wedding anniversary. Yeah, yeah that, I won't repeat what my husband said. But <laughs> and okay. then the next month, uh, I did a 185 back squat. So I was really excited about that and a little surprised, too. So those PRs are still there. And are there, is there any sign of them stopping, you know? Or how are you guys, how are you guys feeling? How are your bodies holding up to the volume of training that you're doing? Mark, I'll start with you. Um, like I said, I, I'm able to, to work out three days in a row, then take a day rest. Um, and when I first started crossfitting, you know, uh, three days a week was, was, was all I could do because I was sore the other four days. Um, so, <laughs> so now, um, you know, my, my, my uh, ability to recover from those workouts and do more work um, is better than it was a few years ago. But, you know, as I get older, I've got more aches and pains too. And you have to, you know, you have to take care of your body. And there's times sure. where you, you go to the gym and you have to scale it back or, or mostly stretch. Um, so there's the more of those days. Um, but when I'm feeling good, um, I'm still seeing gains in, in intensity. Um, so Aches and pains, and I think you're even losing your hair. Yeah. Here. Here we go. Help you out there. I'm going to put this on my notes so I can look at your mustache and be motivated. <laughs> but uh, keep, keep the little soul patch. I like it. But uh, we, we spoke this morning, and like you're saying, um, when you were younger, maybe you get up and you don't expect every day to have aches and pains, you get to feel pretty good, and if something hurts, it's kind of unusual. But you said that's one thing as you get older, maybe some of us don't realize is you're gonna get up every day and you're gonna have aches and pains every day and go to the gym and deal with them. So that's right. How do you how do you push through that? What motivates you to get up every day and still go into the gym and get after it? Well for one thing, at the end of a workout it's not uncommon to feel better than I felt going into the workout. It just happened to Definitely. me the other on Monday. So it's that helps motivate me. That and for me, it's a goal to stay healthy and active, and that's been one of the goals from the very start. So you've seen, you know, and again, we talk about this all the time, the stories all over the journal about it, but you've seen your just regular daily quality of life get better, improve, or life's daily tasks get easier because of what you're doing in the gym? Yes, and for me, it's also a goal not to be on any prescription medication, and I'm not. Yeah, brag about that. I thought that was so cool. We <laughs> talked about that this morning. 64 years old, not on a single prescription. And Nothing. You go to your doctor and he has to ask you twice who doesn't believe you. or That's correct. <laughs> they do. That's not to say that as we get older there aren't health issues, and I've had them, but you get through it and just keep going. Sure. And, uh, and Mark, I thought it was really interesting this morning talking with you that you're in the medical profession, and we were talking about how there's somewhat of a disconnectedness between these are the people we look to as to what is a healthy lifestyle, how do I obtain that, and while they themselves sometimes aren't really setting the examples, and here you are as a fit doc, you know, what do, you, what do your peers make of what you're doing? Um, well, you know, a lot of them have heard of CrossFit, um, especially here in Santa Cruz since CrossFit started here. A lot of people know about CrossFit. Right. Um, a lot of them think it's crazy, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, a lot of them have watched me um, getting, getting more fit and uh, and you know they they may not be ready to do CrossFit, but you know they talk to me about you know what they do. You know mm -hmm. they're mountain biking or they're 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 doing other things. And so um, you know maybe maybe it inspires some other people to get out and be a little bit more active. Um, and we thought that maybe one of the key problems was the diet, the nutrition. You, know, you do do a lot of your you know uh, coworkers bring their lunch to work and kind of <laughs> look at it and go oof. <laughs> that might be where you're going wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think nutrition is a big part of the problem for the overall health problem in our country. And I think there's just a lot of confusion about it out there. Um, and, and the medical profession probably should do more to really, you know, develop better information about the way people should eat um, and live their lives. Instead of, you know, we tend to give people medications. We tend to right. focus on a problem instead of really focusing on improving health. Now you are, you know, we're here in 
Scotts Valley in the Santa Cruz, you know, excuse me, in the, in the, the media office here, and you have a unique relationship with several people that work in this office, <laughs> specifically Rory and Tony. So what, what do you do in the medical field? Well, I'm a urologist, um, and so uh, I, I treat men's health problems. So you've had a, you've had a, a special glimpse into Tony and Roy's work capacity, so to speak. I have, the below the desk. Every woman's dream, every woman's dream. So post your comments about that one, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. So the, the uh, game's coming up. Every CrossFitter, doesn't matter what walk of life, how old you are, there are things that you just can't stand. So what is your just most hated movement? Like you're like, oh God, please don't put this in a workout. Oh gosh. Uh, that's <laughs> you put me on the spot. I mean, there's things that are difficult. Uh, burpees are challenging, um, but the more I do them, the more I don't mind doing them. Sure. So uh, there is no single one thing. I happen to like to run. It's slow, but I I like it. And of course, I love any of the powerlifting. Or well, I'm glad to hear nothing changes. They, everybody hates burpees. Doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you do. Burpees are terrible. Mark, how about yourself? For me, the double under has always been the oh. dragon that I've been trying to slay. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm, I've got it uh, beaten back at least. Um, so that's what I'm working on the hardest. That's and we got, and the games are upon us right next week. So mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe we'll see burpees, double lunge, get another week to polish them up. But uh, I wish you guys nothing but the best. Well, thank I you. know thank you're you. both going to kick ass. We've been watching video of you guys for years, and we're going to watch them for years to come. So again, thank you, everybody. And uh, we're going to be right much. back with uh, Jason Kalipa and Neil Maddox. So don't go anywhere, anybody. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Pat Sherwood. She's Miranda Oldroyd. He's Neil Maddox. Here's what we have going on. We've got one of my favorite people from the CrossFit community. Finally dragged him into the studio, and we're just going to relentlessly pick his brain and get to know him. So, Neil, welcome. Thank you. Uh, 2010 CrossFit Games, 25th place. Yep. And then you threw down in the regionals, took fourth, yep. kicked ass. And so, first of all, how does it feel to know you're going back to the games? You earned a spot. <laughs> you know, words can't explain it. Um, you know, regionals, went into regionals and uh, learned a lot about myself, um, especially going through the CrossFit game, going to the CrossFit Games last year and learning how mental preparation is so key. Um, when I competed in regionals last year, I had no idea. When I went to the Games, you see all these great athletes. I mean, these guys are just throwing down these numbers, and you're like, whoa, you know? And so it kind of messes with you mentally. And then when you see that little scoreboard and you see your name floating down on the charts a little <laughs> right. bit, you're like, holy moly, you know? And uh, the same thing kind of happened this year. You know, went to regionals, you know, sectionals uh, or the, you know, the open workouts were great. When you compete in the regionals in those games, it's, it's just different. And so when I was there, you know, the first workout was one of those workouts that it, it taxed some people. And so, you know, it, it's tricky. You can go into it, but then those handstand push-ups creep on you real fast. So my name kind of floated down, but with my experience last year, I, I remember that no matter what, you can stay in it. Stay in it. Uh, matter of fact, Tommy, he told me something uh, when I was in the backstage uh, over at the games, He and because it was just right after we finished that, that triple Helen. And mm -hmm. uh, he said, you know, one thing he said, it's a long weekend. It's a very long week. There's a lot of events. You never know how they're going to play out. Exactly. And that's, so from 2010 and taking 25th, I'm sure, you know, you've been an athlete your whole life. Yep. You're a competitor. You're a sharp guy. I'm sure you took a look at that and said, all right, if I'm coming back next year, here's my plan. Here's how I need to tweak my training. So what's this last year look like? What did you look at? What did you analyze? You want to know something? I, I realized uh, running was one aspect that I needed to work on. Uh, short duration workouts, I could blow through them easy because I'm a, I'm a crushed Amanda I'm a, I'm a football yeah. player you know you know it, when you play football you know most of your things are within 40 yards at the most 60 yards uh, you know whereas if you're you know a track runner or 
soccer player, more longer duration running. So I really focused on my running, and I just focused on more longer, uh, you know, Metcons and stuff. You know, matter of fact, I just a while back did lumberjack 2020, uh, <laughs> 20, and I told her I actually upped the deadlift and uh, was just toying with some uh, certain things. But um, you know, most of all, focusing on my running. Uh, you know, I also. Uh, was over at uh, another level one cert, went to a couple of them, but then mm -hmm. uh, went to this last one right after, uh, right on the last day of the uh, open and talked to Jason and uh, teamed up with him. And uh, that was another thing that totally changed my game. Um, started am ramping my workouts up again and really just getting after it, you know. he uh, He's got to be a great person oh, just to get after with everything. Awesome. You're, you know, if you're taking 25th of the games, chances are there's not a lot of people in your gym yeah. They're going to yeah. give you regular competition, so yeah. to all of a sudden be able to, be, you know, have another pipe hitter there with you to actually push you. Yeah. And and last year, so you were 25th, but yeah. you had only been crossfitting a short time, right? Like, yeah. how long had you been crossfitting before the games um, last year? Last year, before the games, uh, man, I think nine months at the at total. Uh, you know, I, I got my level one and all that stuff, but I was still toying with some of my old training techniques, yeah. so I didn't really convert over. But then, you know, like anything else, you just fall in love with it and it becomes your life and uh, you just go from there. How was that initial meeting uh, with Kalipa? Was it like <laughs> two junkyard dogs kind of sniffing each other a bit? Was it friendly right from the get-go? How was the something? relationship? It, he's an awesome person and it was friendly from the get-go. And it, it is built from there. You know, I, estab I established some great relationships over at his gym with uh, some great guys. And, uh, you know, it, like I said, it was, like I told my daughter, it was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in a long, you know, in a long time, in a sense of training. It's really cool. And I've got no doubt, you know, seeing some of the footage you guys, you know, hitting it hard as hell. And something which we're always curious about is, you're getting it that day, I mean, we all do cross it, yeah. you know, this hurts, it hurts bad. You want to put the barbell down, you want to slow down that four meter run, so when you get to that point, either in your own training or in competition, what, what drives you, what motivates you to push that hard, to keep hitting it? I, I just, you know, I love the feel. I just love it, you know, being, <laughs> being a competitor, I just <laughs> love it. It, 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 you, you get to that point and, and it's like, you know, it's go, it's right there, you know it's going to be over, but it's just, it, it, it just <laughs> takes you to a level that, you know, people know, if you take yourself to that level, it just takes you to a level that afterwards, those endorphins that release are just great, you know, it's like an ultimate high. How would you compare that to like football? Uh, you know, very similar, well, what I think about CrossFit in football, I'm thinking about when I'm in the fourth quarter or like <laughs> it's an it's a, it's a overtime uh, game and it's do or die and, or it's like a 16 play drive and this team is fourth and goal and they're hunting down your back. You don't have <laughs> anybody, yeah. you don't have anybody who's going, you know, it's do or die. There ain't, there ain't nothing else and that's, that's what it is where you feel sick to your stomach because you've been out there all day and you know that this is the last play. You, you've got to get it now and if you don't get it now, it could be the game. So that's what CrossFit is. Every single workout is like that. Matter of fact, I was just telling Jason yesterday when I was getting ready to do a workout me and I'm like, I, I still start getting <laughs> right. sick. Still I get the butterfly. butterfly. Oh, <laughs> every single time I get there, I'm like, man, why am I feeling sick before this workout? Yeah. You and know? so, you know, Everyone needs a little bit of a release outside of cross. Yeah. It's something to do outside the walls of the gym just to, to decompress. And, you know, I was, I was telling you, you know, before we were talking, I was get to know you and I wanted to poke around your Facebook page a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> we may or may not spend some time yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, we may or may not spend some time on Facebook. And uh, you said it was for your daughter, but there's some pictures of you at a very, very cool concert. It's the artist <laughs> formerly known as Prince. Yep. And so uh, just, uh, is, he, uh, is he on your iPod in the music uh, selection? Uh, yeah, well, not when I'm working out. <laughs> During the Lumberjack 20, you know, just right. rocking out to Prince. Yeah, Purple little Rain. red Corvette. Yeah, a little red Corvette. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, um, you know, I like Prince. I took my daughter to a concert, her first Prince concert. But uh, you know, you know, I'm a Prince, Michael Jackson fan. You know, I, I go with the '80s stuff a I'm little right bit. I'm right there with you, man. Like to switch it up. That's you know, awesome. but if I'm gonna work out, you know, I have to have some Pearl Jam or something really spinning me pretty good. Some Eminem or something. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, good for choice. sure. And uh, and so on top of you know, you're working out, you're competitive, you're paired up with Kalipa, yeah. you know, you're running your own box. You know, how are you? How are you managing all that now? One week out from the games? Well, you know, I got a great support system. You know, I got, uh, there's one guy who, uh, Ray Espinoza and then uh, Sin out of New York. I, I got great support systems all around. Now I get to 
talk to these guys on a day-to-day -day basis and you know they help to keep things in perspective but not only that you know they you know I have my guys who are I'm cutting back my hours of working and they're getting taken on the workload for me uh, just so I could focus a little bit more on my training and my recovery because uh, the recovery is the biggest part right now and just making sure that my body's prepped for the games because I know it's going to be a hell week but yes. guess what I've been through many of them through my life and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I want to ask you, and I've talked to you about this yeah. before. I've asked you this before. There's there have been videos posted yeah. of you throughout the past year or whatever, and sometimes we see some negative, kind of like a negative attitude or some negative comments towards you. And yeah. so you're here. You have this platform. Let's. Why do you think that is? First of all, and and uh, I mean, what do you have to say about well, that? Well, well, you know, a lot of times when you get someone right after a workout, you know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm a defensive player. I played, you know, football my whole life, and I played on the defensive side of the ball. So I'm fired up, and I'm amped and stuff like that. <laughs> and I want to go rip someone's head off, you know. <laughs> and when you're talking to me right after a, a right after a workout, you know, and the adrenaline is up and everything is just going, you know, sometimes things can be taken out of uh, the concept of sure. things. And so, uh, and all, you know, I just, you know, I mean, when you get to know me, you realize, you know, I'm a very down to earth guy very spiritual and you know I'm a I'm a lovely uh, uh, I you know I'm a loving father I you know take care of my daughter and um, take care of my dogs that are pretty <laughs> much my pets not only that my fish you know I have a whole bunch nice. of animals you know Your I'm a very house. loving person Noah's, exactly Noah's Ark over here yeah Noah's Ark exactly <laughs> so man Noah's Ark. <laughs> managing all that let's say it, it all culminates it you know you put in the training the time the discipline you're yeah. a motivated athlete what would it mean to you to win the games this year? <laughs> Everything, you know. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, just like everyone else. You put in every single day. and um, Words couldn't, I, I don't have the words to explain. I mean, I know it's going to be a battle from day one until the final, the final hour of day three. And uh, words, I don't have the words to explain it. Well, we put in the time. We, we wish you nothing but the yeah. best, and uh, we'll be there in about one week cheering you on. So totally. Thank, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. All right, don't go anywhere, anybody. We will be right back. Okay, we gotta go. Be right there. Don't worry. There you go. We are with Jason Kalipa, community favorite, 2008 <laughs> Games champion, 2009, fifth place, fifth place, 2010, 16th place, and 2011, first, Hopefully first place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that's, <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to talk about that because uh, I've talked to you a lot, Jason, and you're probably one of the most adamant and passionate people I've heard time and time again, you know, of just wanting to be the repeat champion. You bust your ass to do that. So you're going, you're in amazing shape this year. What would it mean to you to, no kidding, be the first two times champion of the games? Well, I think if you ask any of the previous champions, they're, they'll be fired up about potentially winning it again. Or if you win it again, I mean, there wouldn't be a better feeling. You know, when I won in 08, it was kind of like out of nowhere. You know, it was just like, I kind of went in there expecting to do well, <laughs> and then boom, I don't know where you just went. And uh, I think- Instant fame. Right, and I, and I think it was a great feeling. It was, it was definitely, uh, you know, at that point, one of the best days of my life, if not the best day of my life at that point. And, uh, but I think winning it now would be a totally different level. And the reason for it is I put in so much work now. So like for 2008, I put in some work, you know, I trained, I had fun, but it wasn't like, I was dedicated to winning the CrossFit Games. You know, I just went there, wanted to see how I would do. You know, in 2011, the biggest difference for me, or even 2010 or 2009, is that I've dedicated years of my life to this sport to perform at the CrossFit Games. And so winning would just make it that much, you know, because of all the work I've put in, because of all the dedication, all the sacrifices I've made, and, you know, it, it, would, it would be phenomenal. It would be absolutely one of the best days, you know, like getting married, 
having a baby, crush at Games Win. And being yeah. on the show. And being on the show. Thank you. Okay. Right and there. And meeting with me. me. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> so, Jason, I'm so excited that you're here, and I'm actually shocked that we could fit, you know, you behind the desk and get you to sit still <laughs> to for widen five the minutes. Desk. But um, so we saw one thing that's interesting about you is that there's a couple people who were pre-qualified for the games this year. Um, you and Annie Thorstadter were the only two who decided to go to regionals. You didn't have to and compete as an individual at, re at regionals. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that. Why did you do that? Um, well, months ago, I had decided on my own. I had said, you know, I want to, uh, I, I want to compete in the regional. I want to compete in the open. I want to compete in the regional. And uh, I, I told myself this because I had three goals going into this year. Very simple goals. Get coaching. Uh, put myself in more competition settings and learn how to pace. <laughs> and all three of those I've accomplished, uh, I mean, so far, uh, I, I've gotten coaching. Austin over at CrossFit uh, Milpitas, he's been with me, uh, he's been programming for myself and for Neil, actually, for months now. Uh, and I've gone over there, I've gotten coaching from him. Uh, more competition settings. One thing is obviously on the competition settings, I've put myself in a position every day to compete with someone such as Neil. But, but in addition to that, I needed the actual competition competition, mm -hmm. which is why I decided to do the Open, and then more importantly, why I decided to do the Regional, uh, was to put myself in the exact position I'll be at for the CrossFit Games. And you had one of the most dominating uh, individual performances of any of the Regional qualifiers as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can be happy uh, about sure. that, it's amazing. Yeah. No, I, I, think I, I think I performed well. I, 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 I was happy with my performances. I. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a great weekend, uh, but more importantly, it wasn't the fact that I won or whatever. It was the fact that I, I set myself to a game plan, which was X, and I stuck to the game plan. And, and that was the game plan. You know, I'll give you an example, the hundreds workout. The old me, 100 pull-ups all day, baby. Let's just go out the gate and just hit it hard. This Sprint. Is, this is me doing pull-ups, by the way. So, full range of motion. Full range right. of motion. Um, <laughs> But the thing is, is that I would have just hit it hard and then said, screw it. You know, I'm going to hit it hard and we'll see what happens. Um, the new me is like, you know what? The let's try and, let, this the, is new the, the new me would be like, hey, let's try and do 10. Let's do another 10. Let's do that 10 times and see how it goes. And then, you know, from there, just kind of pace it out. And uh, same thing with the Amanda workout. Yeah. Very important for me to relax. And, and The biggest eye-opening experience for me was that in, 08, in the 2010 games, I got five minutes, 40 seconds, almost broke a crammer lens and did a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and, and it was for no other reason than just, I literally went out the gates too hard. You know, I was trying to keep up with Chris Spewer the whole time, right. back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and I was feeling good. All of a sudden I got to the last set of five and I was burnt. I had nothing in me, body turned numb, I was seeing stars, it was just crazy. I remember, I remember watching it live, you know, being there obviously, and then since you were gonna be on the show today, I, I called up the old footage and sat down last night and just watched it on the computer and it was just, yeah, just a bowl in a china. It was, well, what makes you such an amazingly entertaining athlete to watch is for the longest time it looked like you didn't have a, a gas and a brake pedal, you just had a gas. And as soon as you heard <laughs> 3, 2, 1, go, you would smash it to the floor and kind of hope for the best. So, yep. you know, that seemed to be one of your biggest limiting factors was just, I mean, you don't need to be strong or have more lungs. It was just that pacing and kind of the whole mental side of the house you needed to kind of tune in a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree. So, so back to that is uh, I was at my gym and I found out for the um, regionals the, that some, that workout was coming up again. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna just try it with um, doing every single thing on bro like broken, every single rep, one muscle up, one muscle up, one muscle up. Then like I did the whole thing just walking through it, didn't break a sweat, and I got five minutes and like ten seconds. Didn't break a sweat. Wow. But, and I was just sitting here <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, like. Shocking. Like, yes. okay. So, you know, <laughs> so that, strategy was a, works. that was an eye-opening experience for me. And, you know, previously in the years past, it was always about, you know, my, me my, my, mental, ed my mental component was just go in there, go balls out, and see how it goes. That, that's always been my motto. Because no matter what happens, you at least say, I went balls out. Right. Couldn't be done any better. Something uh, heroic in that. Yeah. But then, and then at the same time, I've started to realize. We, we can do business smarter. And yes. Smooth is fast. Yes. How have you realized that? I mean, talk to us about some of the things that you've done or maybe some coaching or help that you've had to figure that stuff out. Yeah, so first off, I had to, I had to realize that, right? I had to come to the realization that, hey, I have a problem. Acceptance. I had, I had to accept. <laughs> step, step one. Step one, I accepted the fact <laughs> that I have a problem. 
<laughs> Step two. Uh, so, so what I did was I, um, first off, I uh, started approaching workouts differently on my own, right? Kind of saying to myself, assessing the workout. Let's just say it was um, whatever, the hundreds workout. Assessing it. Hey, 100 pull-ups. How should I break them up? What do I think? Da, 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 da. And, 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 and doing that on my own. Um, that was before I started sharing with Neil. I just started doing it on my own a little bit. And then um, after I started sharing with Neil, starting to see kind of like, because he in the beginning used to overly pace. What I mean by that is he used to bust out his stopwatch and look at it. And, you know, <laughs> him and I would have these debates. He would, he would love looking at his stuff. All right, 30 seconds. He's looking at him it. like, what's, what's this guy doing? Yeah, well, you know, but it was working for him. He was performing well. But he was a little bit um, overly pacing. And I was definitely not pacing. Right. So it was a good way to come together and talk about the medium ground. In addition to that was just um, I started seeing a sports psychologist on um, – not so much like pretty much nothing else except for understanding the things that are in my control and out of my control. I was watching Spieler the other day and he was saying some stuff like, there's certain things that are in my control, there's certain things that are out of my control. If you start to concern yourself with things that are out of your control, well, now you're just putting out of pressures and you're just not having a good time, but it's, not, it's out of your control. And so realizing what's in your control and what's out of your control is very, very important for me. And realizing that I, I'm not in control of the workouts. I don't know what they're gonna be. I'm not in control of how many they're going to be. I'm not in control of who my competitors are or how well they're going to perform. I'm not in control of any of that stuff. Things I am in control of, my warm-up, my nutrition, my whatever. You know what I mean? And so realizing that and realizing that I could get a game plan, set up a game plan, and then it's in my control to stick to that game plan. No one else is going to mess it up except for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that stuff is so key and so many people, they don't ever think about the mental side and... You know, like Pat was saying earlier, everybody that shows up to the games this year is going to be fit. And, you know, everything's been tested to this point pretty much. It's just who's going to be mentally there and prepared to do it when it matters. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's cool. Have you had to address at all just uh, not only the, the pacing issue on the mental side of the house, but the pressure of, you know, and you may laugh about it, but serious, the pressure of being Jason Kalipa in the CrossFit <laughs> community and the former games champion. And people expect big things when you walk out on the stage. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've came to realize, like, over the years, like, I've had pressure for years. It's not like I just started out, like, you know, in 08, I won. And then all of a sudden, 09, I had a lot of pressure. 2010, I had a lot of pressure. Everywhere I go, I have a lot of pressure. I could show up to, you know, we all teach certifications. I could show up, be doing my little lunchtime workout on my oh, own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just doing my thing. All of a sudden, because someone comes up, you know, you, you know, and just says some, you know, like, there's a lot of expectations on you to perform at a level that's X, Right. And, and I think, again, it just goes back to the things that are in your control and out of your control. I'm in the control of my own abilities, and I don't need to worry about what other people want to think about me, you know? Now, if they want to, you know, be fans and they like the way I work and how hard I perform, that's awesome. I appreciate that and I respect that. But I can't concern myself with pleasing them because that's just going to add more pressure to me. I just need to go out there, do my best, and... Honestly, that's all a fan can ever ask for is that their mm -hmm. athlete or the person they're rooting on for does their absolute best. And I can guarantee you um, that uh, I'm going to go out there and give it 100% effort. Like, you're never going to see from me a half-ass effort, you know? Like, we know that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's you know, what makes you one even of the, with the crowd game favorites. Planning, even with game planning, it's not going to be a half-ass game plan. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to go out there. And then, you know, if we have five minutes left, I'm feeling, I'm feeling juicy. Juicy. <laughs> I might have to step up. I might have to throw on the throttles and, 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 and you know, but I'm not going to leave anybody sitting there being like, oh, Jason kind of looks like he was just a little flat there. He didn't look like he sure. really tried. There's always going to be a show. We know that for sure. Yeah. So what, this is obviously a huge part of your life, you know, from your employment, you run your gym, you're changing people's lives, and now you're going to the games, you're representing a lot of people, you know, look up to you at the games. What does it mean to you to be a to be a games athlete, to be a competitor like that? To be a games competitor is a, is an honor just to go to the CrossFit Games. Um, I I've put in a lot of work to get there, and um, it, it is just it's just an honor just to go there. You know, I was watching a thing that Blair Morrison said, and one of the things that he said in particular was that life is full of um, you know, a lot of people just live their life right, and they just go in day in and day out right, and then there's little things that come up that are. Um, that are like uh, different, mm -hmm. uh, for lack of a better word. And the CrossFit Games are different. There's something I'm, I'm, I'm shooting towards, my goals are towards them, 
and I don't know what they're going to be. And it's a life experience. You know what I mean? Like it's an experience in life. It's not the same old crap every day. I don't go to work every day hating my job. And, and, and I, I, I love what I do for a living. I love that I'm training for something. And I love the fact that I'm going to show up to the CrossFit Games. Yes, am I nervous about it? Of course. Am I, am I eager to see what's going to happen? Of course. But it's an experience that very few people get, and I get to experience it. And that's awesome. And not many people can say that. A lot of people just live their lives and just boring. With me, I don't know what's going to come. <laughs> not boring. You're not boring. No, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's, it's, it's a life experience. I might walk out there. I might be stuck in a dungeon for two hours, dungeon. come out and have to do some push-ups and climb up 40-foot ropes and feel like I'm going to die. I might do it. You know, and that's cool. It's invigorating. It's something different. It's, it's a life experience. And so that's what I'm most excited about. Well, you've been kicking ass for years. No, no doubt you're going to kick ass again this year. We I'm going to ask you. him. Well, I'm going to ask him. Uh oh. Do you think you are you ready to win? Are you Ooh. ready to repeat? Yes or no? Here's my answer to that. <laughs> yes, and I think anybody who doesn't say that and is going to the CrossFit Games it shouldn't be going to the CrossFit Games. All right. Absolutely, I think I have a legitimate Had shot winning him. the CrossFit Games, and I think there's I think there's a good I think there's a good 15 to 20 guys. Easily, who can win the cross the games? And I think um, anybody who's trying to pinpoint, oh, top three, top two, top five, you can't really do it with the men. No. I, I don't feel like you can. I feel like there's so many competitors. Depends who shows up on that day, or excuse me, that weekend, and performs, and if they can perform to their capabilities. And I think, um, I think it's gonna be a show. I think it's gonna be badass. It's gonna be a show. Yeah. Well, He's ready. Yeah, you're ready. We look forward to seeing you. Good luck, Jason. Thank you. Next week, it's on. Yeah, next week is the CrossFit Games. It happened just like that. We will have our show next Monday from the Home Depot Center. See everybody there. Welcome to the show. I'm Pat Sherwood. And I'm Rory McKernan. I don't think that you are. <laughs> this is a fake mustache. You have money for fake mustaches? You look like a, just a, a sexually confused musketeer. Just for the opportunity. You're fired. Bing, bing, bong. <laughs>